Yo, what up? It's your boy, Mr. Aldridge, AKA Chemist Nate, coming at you with another banger. This time we are transforming the function y equals the square root of x. Now f of x is code for y, so this is the base function y equals the square root of x into negative 3f of 1 half x plus 7 and then an extra plus 8. Your job is to identify what the transformations that each of these numbers and negative signs actually does on the base function. So we're gonna start with stretches and compressions. The three outside of the F, i.e. written after or before the F and multiplied there is a vertical stretch by a factor of three. It means it is three times taller than it originally was. The one half, which is multiplied on the inside of F and is already factored out of the X plus seven, represents a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Now, please note that even though it says one half here, the X's need to be double as big to offset it before you F the function or apply the function F. So this is a vertical stretch and this is also a stretch, although it is horizontal. Next, we're gonna talk about reflections. The only negative here to worry about is the negative on the outside, which means it is a vertical reflection. You have to say that it is on the x-axis because the x-axis is the horizontal line that you flip across if things that are up now point down and things that are down now point up. Lastly, we have some translations. The one on the inside is horizontal. Have you noticed that anything on the inside of the F bracket represents a horizontal transformation? True. This is a horizontal translation left seven and I know it's counterintuitive that plus seven means to the left, but hey, this one half was a stretch. So you're just gonna have to get used to the idea that horizontal things are backwards from what you think. This plus eight on the outside is a vertical translation and it is as you expect, it is up eight. How do you actually apply each of these transformations to the original function y equals the square root of x? One option is to start with the original points of the square root function. You're probably supposed to have memorized that. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. Note that the y coordinate of each of these points is the square root of each of the x's. Then, one by one, we apply these transformations to create new points. A vertical stretch by a factor of three will multiply all the y coordinates by three. One times three is three, two times three is six, three times three is nine. That got times by three, that got times by three, that got times by three, that got times by three. Because it was vertical, it was only the y's. The horizontals will affect the x's because it's stretched, we times all the x's by two. Zero times two is zero. Two times two, I mean one times two is two. Am I saying too many numbers here? Double that x coordinate, double that y, double that x coordinate as well. Ugh. A vertical reflection makes all the y coordinates flip their signs. Zero isn't affected, but three becomes negative three. 6 becomes negative 6, 9 becomes negative 9. A horizontal translation, left 7, means you take 7 away from each of the x's. Again, counterintuitive from what's written there, but true. So taking away 7 from this gives me negative 7. Taking 7 away from 2 gives me negative 5. Take 7 away, take 7 away. And lastly, I need to translate all of these points up eight. I add eight to each of the y's. That's negative seven, eight, negative five. When I add eight to that, I get positive five. 
When I add eight to this, I get positive two. When I add eight to this, I get uh, negative one. Nice. So this is my base curve and this is my fully transformed curve according to what is written here. And your teacher is probably going to ask you to sketch both the base curve and the final curve and probably every curve that's in between. But you have the points, so you should be able to do that. Shall we do it together? Yes, we shall. What kind of teacher would I be if I didn't? So I'm going to put a point at 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. For my base curve, if you don't recognize this as the square root function, I don't know what you've been doing with your life. The next curve I would draw starts at 0, 0, goes to 1, 3, 4, 6, and 9, 9. That's off the graph. You'll just notice this is the same thing, but it's been stretched vertically taller by a factor of 3. The next one starts at 0, 0, goes to 2, comma 3, uh, 8, comma 6. That's going to be way over here. And you'll notice this is the same as the curve I just drew, like the vertically stretched curve, except it's now been stretched horizontally. Is this boring? Too bad. You got to do it. I recommend using a different color pen for every one of these. Uh, I don't have too many colored pens. Right now, I have one pen, and if it dies, so does my career. The next one is zero, zero, down to two, negative three, and eight, negative six. Oh, that one's clearly vertically reflected. What was pointing up is now pointing down. That's the stuff. The next one starts at negative seven, comma, zero. It's way over here. Negative five comma negative three, neg or positive one comma negative six, and eleven comma negative nine. If I was gonna, that's way off. It's almost off the paper here. I'll put it there anyways. Oh, look at that! It's the same curve that I had before, but it's been shifted to the like seven to the left, and so some more points that didn't fit on my paper before have now reappeared. Lastly, I shift everything up eight. I start at negative seven comma positive eight, negative five comma positive five. Uh, where is that gonna be? Somewhere in here. One comma two, oh, right over here. And 11 comma negative one, that's somewhere over here. There's my final, oh, I almost missed. There's my final transformed curve. It is taller than it originally was, wider than it originally was by a factor of two, flipped so it points down instead of up. Notice it still points to the right when this pointed to the right. If it was pointing to the left, a horizontal reflection would have been present, but there wasn't. Then we shifted it left seven and up eight. Oh yes, this is the final transformed graph compared to this one. Not too bad, it only took me eight minutes and 40 seconds, and I'm doing every step with care because I care about you. Best of luck.